Welcome back, everyone, to Recorder on the Wall. And uh, I am your recently returning host, Jeremy. I'm Pete. I'm Katie. I'm Drew. Got the full crew here today. Lovely. Although, we'll eventually get Matthias back in. He's still dealing with some stuff he... Um, with personal life. We hope you get, get you back soon, Matthias. So. But we read we read Manimanio Book 2, General Ironbeak. We did? Uh, you did. Yeah, read I, the I, I did. I'm, the I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, so, yeah, we read Book 2, and uh, it was mostly what I remembered, but some stuff... I thought, oh, okay. So, we'll go with that. I cried for Warbeak. Oh. Fair enough. Yeah, let's talk about that. Neon so, let's start it right off. An angel. Oh, sorry, were we going in order? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of happened towards the end, but... Yeah. Okay, that's all right. If people... Yeah, by the way, folks, if you haven't already realized, there may be some spoilers here. So let's get, let's just get right into book, it. That did happen in this book, though, didn't it? Hmm? That did happen in this book, though, didn't it? Yes, yes. it did. Yes, it did. Okay, it did. good. I was yeah. like, wait, did I read I ahead? Know, the, Wouldn't be the first time. The temptation for me was definitely to, like, once I hit the end of book two, was to not read ahead into book three, because I didn't want to inadvertently confuse anything, even if I've already read this book before, back in back some years ago. <laughs> yes, yes. So, since we're running with the same crew, um, we'll skip the how we found the book, impressions of it, uh, back then, but we'll get right into the basic plot interview. We have new characters! Yay! Uh, Yay. So, introdu- introductions. On the hero side, uh, we have Sir Harry the Muse. He's an owl who likes to s- speak in poetry. Except Unless for when he's business. dealing in business. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you could definitely tell Jake's had a lot of fun with when he creates the songs or poet- poetry or riddles in the franchise, because this happens in every book. Right. Yes. And then, yes, we they were mentioned last time, but they kind of haven't had a big role before now. We have Sister May, who is awesome. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not someone you want to cross. And, uh, Albert... I want to slaughter this name. Abbott you know Mordolphus. Thank you. I was going to say, let's just call him Father Abbott, because that's easy, easier. <laughs> so, yeah, he, again... He was used in the last book, and we know who his character is because he was in the original Red Wall, but sure. But he definitely has a bigger role this time. Yep. And I'm going to go as far as saying, uh, compared to the previous Abbott, he is a little bit more savvy and even a little bit more snarky. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I did appreciate the point where he's negotiating with General Ironbeak and just kind of sits down and starts drawing pictures in the sand. He's like, well... That's if that's how you want to do it. <laughs> Just kind of like dismissing him. Yeah. Kill them right. if you have to. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. no. And that means we're just back on the villain side for new character introductions. As we've already mentioned, we have General Iron Beak and his Raven Army. So. Yes, have... and another seer. Yeah, do we have a seer in Mossflower? I know we didn't catch it, technically. But since that was published before this one. Um, I don't believe Fortunato was a seer. Oh, the uh, the Badger Lord was a seer. Oh, oh yes, for the fighter, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, this, so as far as we're concerned, though, this is kind of our first introduction to any kind of seer. Uh, Richard Redwall doesn't have one. I don't think so. I would say so. No. Was she oh, a maybe seer, not. though? She doesn't have any dreams or a charlatan. She was, she yeah. She was more of a production, an over the top production type character, where she was just kind of doing it to put on a show and make it look like she had mysticism, but just really understood how herbs worked. Yes, yes. I won't say this is the first true seer in the series, but it's close. Mm-hmm. And then yes, we have a seer crow named Magnus, <laughs> who's he's not full star strength. He doesn't want to take over a four iron beak, but he's definitely a toady. Yep. And then and we have, we have his general uh, birds. His general birds, and he has his, his supply train magpies, who are individually named, but... Do we need to go over <laughs> I, I really don't <laughs> think we do, because they're, they're never not seen as a group, so... True. The magpies. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we're going to get to the painted ones in just a sec, because I want to spend time with these guys. Um, we have Stonefleck and his red horde. 
who apparently uh, watched this southern river south of Mossflower in the go- in the gorge. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I yep. can deal with that. Barring, we're going to ignore the fact that Clooney should have been come through these guys at some point back during his war, but maybe he had a big enough maybe he has a big enough army to say that Clooney, yes, screw you, I'm not joining up. It's not the point. It was either that or Clooney's men that were looking for recruits were like, I don't want to climb up that wall and talk to them. Right. Uh, but Stoneflake is a new character. He's kind of this, like, quiet, reserved villain. Um, and I have to ask the question. I don't mind another Red Army here. No, that's fine. But uh, what are they getting out of this? No, seriously. I don't know. No, that, that, is a, that is a very good point. They yeah. just seem to be there. And Power? their territory. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a, we don't know. We never were given a, like, a definite number of how many slaves slaggers cl- cl- carting around. And we don't... Spoilers for the book three here. We don't actually see any coins change hands come book three. So what are they getting out of it? I mean, I mean, maybe it's a thing of, like, my father did this and his father did this before him, so we just have always been here and that's the way it is. <laughs> I mean, I could, Yeah, I, I could go with that. Uh, yeah. Or maybe if Slagar and Sunflake have been friends for a while, you know, sure, I'll go with that. But really, we... They're just kind of... The, they're just going to help out Slagar because it's a Tuesday. So... <laughs> yeah. There really is kind of a, a point of interest in the uh, the Redwall series of books is sometimes Jake does throw in villains for the sake of numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm trying to... can't think of more examples without spoiling other books, but I... Uh, sometimes I... I mean, I definitely just read over it. I wasn't thinking about it till now. I'm not sure if it's their motivations are all that important. But I mean, when you're a child reading this, it's not the first thing you think of. So no, yeah, 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 no, yeah. it's not. But as an adult, we can, and as as part of this review podcast, we can afford the time to question this. So. Right. All right. Theories. Thinking caps on. I, I like Katie's theory here. I really do. So whereas it's just the way. These rats have always lived. That this southern area is their territory. I want you to write a fanfic about it. (laughs) (laughs) Red Wall expanded. (laughs) I am sure that exists. Uh, Give me a second. I'm going and continue. Uh Oh, Oh. (laughs) bye. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. (laughs) What did you give him? (laughs) Martin Sword. Hey, I was wait, what? Like a rope? 2,106 stories about Redwall on fanfiction.net. Yeah. <laughs> I bet I could find the worst one if you gave me 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, God, we might be digging for a while. <laughs> no, not really. Come back, Jeremy. Come back out of the waterfall. <laughs> no. Long ago, in a, in a distant time, Jeremy and I used to deliberately seek out fanfictions on fanfiction.net the really bad ones, and actively make fun of them. And uh, I had a knack for finding the worst of the worst that you've ever seen. <laughs> I, most of them involve Sonic the Hedgehog, but they were pretty bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sounds like a great new podcast series coming next no. week. <laughs> <laughs> worst fanfic ever. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's always already a podcast for that. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody's got to be covering this. If not, uh, you, viewer, get on it. <laughs> There's definitely some Harry Potter podcasts that make fun of bad Harry Potter fan fiction. My Immortal. Oh. You know, I don't know if that's on there or not. And I think, uh, that la- I think the ladies over at Morphcast who look at the Animorphs fan- uh, fandom, I'm pretty sure they've mentioned one or two once in passing as well. Yeah, by the way, un, uh, unsolicited plug here, guys. If you ever read the Animorphs books, go listen to Morphcast. They're doing the exact same thing we're doing for the Redwall series, but they're far, a lot farther are we are than respectively. And you know what? They're in the, po- in the world in the podcast. Ah, the podcasting industry is uh, is like nine to one with men to women. So here, having a female centric podcast is a very good thing. Mm-hmm. I agree. I found a Clooney romance fan fiction. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. 
him and Jason. Are we going to have to do like a worst fan fiction episode? Oh, we, oh, yes. I, I would love oh. that. Oh, Let's oh, go yeah. for it. That. <laughs> All right. that would make me so happy. Okay, well, I, I like I said, I bet I can find the worst one on there. <laughs> for another time, but yes. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. back, right. back, back to the good back story. To um, before we get to the villains I want to spend the most time with, uh, we have our first rebel good guy group. Well, not even mm. good guys. Rebel good species, if you will. We have rebel shrews in this. Yeah. Who break off from the main group and decide to join Slagar's group. Not and very this well, is the first I'm time you, that, that happens. Um, a couple other instances in the series where shrews turn against the traditional role of the shrew, I guess. Yeah, Marl Fox, I know, has an example of this, too. And um, Doom the, White. Uh, mm-hmm. Martin the Warrior has a bank full that turns, that turns on the good guys. Oh, yep. Yeah, but we're not surprised about evil bulls. <laughs> <laughs> there are some good bulls. <laughs> Admittedly, Rolo is a lot more tolerable here in the book, too, but we'll get to yeah. him. <laughs> But yeah, we have Scan and his group, of, they break off from the main Logolog faction, and they decide to go off, off on their own. It, and that would have been okay, but they go right to Slagar. They would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling painted ones. <laughs> We're going to get to that. Uh, yeah, they br- go right to Slagar and basically give him a, hey, by the way, Matthias is still alive and he's still coming for you. Now he has more, more warriors. And Slagar, he's grateful for the information. And then he chains them up in this part of the slave train. <laughs> and then he gets attacked by Alma. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Badgers for the win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then lastly, our, I don't know if you want to call that or I call them villain, but they're certainly chaotic neutral, if you will. Mm-hmm. But we have the painted ones. And this is a pine forest, specifically pine trees, mm-hmm. that are exist in their own grove and moss flower that the main group walk through. Both groups, the sl- slaver group and the angry parents group. <laughs> the angry and, uh, parents group. That's should angry be like some kind of cover group. band. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, these guys just painted ones. I mean, what do we say about them? Don't they show up in uh, other books as well? Yeah. There's a version of, I know there's a version of them in The Long Patrol. And they actually speak. They actually have a language of sorts. It's not what we what we would call plain English. Yeah. But these ones definitely don't seem to have any sort of words. They just kind of scream and chatter at okay. each other. Let's see. According to the Red Bull Wikia, they they show up in four books. Oh, let's see. Legend of Luke, Doom White, Mayo, mm. and Doom White and the Long Patrol. Ha. Huh. Cool. Huh. I got three oh, out of four. <laughs> now I remember them in Legend of Luke. I don't remember them in Doom White, but also I, I think I tried to block out most of Doom White. <laughs> I like to Doom White. <laughs> that book was frightening. It, it I was. never read it, or at least not yet. So, <laughs> which one was uh, Doom White? With the one with all the body horror. Yeah, What's that? Like, with the raven and the snake, and then the cave full of like bones and cockroaches and it's boiling water. Boiling. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Um. Okay, well, uh, uh, we'll save our comments to. there. Yeah, that was uh, that, that. might be our Halloween one for next year. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I like that oh, idea. Oh, no, now I'm, now I'm remembering. <laughs> the, so, <laughs> the eyes. Yeah. So when would they discover... When on the main cr- both crews discover the painted ones, Slygar and his, and his band know to take this exceedingly seriously. They basically tell the slaves, shut up, get, be quiet, we don't want all of or you'll kill all of us. Mm-hmm. And then one of the guys walks into a tree, and, well, that's the end of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he, Jake has to show how dangerous these guys are. So This is true. And then we get to see how our heroes absolutely don't know what to do as they just kind of start shouting and chatting as they're walking through. Now, maybe yeah. the animated series uh, portrays these guys as, I guess, lemurs is the best way to put it? Yeah, the so. book says they're tree rats, but I'm not... Exactly sure. I have an image of what a tree rat is. Yeah. So, How did the audiobook cover it? Um, as far as the description, or Just like, in, I mean, anything that struck you. Um, 
I mean, there really wasn't much dialogue in this book. I know in The Long Patrol, when they actually had words, it, they had, like, high-pitched voices. So it seems like – sorry, my dog just shook herself very loudly. I don't know if that picked up. Um, yeah. <laughs> it seems like they're – it's the higher pitch, so it seems like they're smaller creatures. Mm-hmm. Huh. I don't know. But, yeah, we don't really know what they are. I mean – yeah, I mean, least, a tree rat. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but... No. At least from Metameo alone, we really don't aren't given enough to really um, kind of just say what they are. I mean, we can go with tree rats. That's fine by me. That, and, though that might be the point. one of the points of them, though, that because part of this book is, you know, all the characters going into, for the most part, relatively unknown territory... And yeah. so it's kind of cool to have these unknown, what are these creatures things that just come out of nowhere and, like, descend on the characters. Admittedly, yeah, and it would, my mind... Sorry, I was just going to say, it would be super scary to be one of the slaves because you're all chained together. So if one of you gets captured, like, you're all kind of stuck <laughs> because you're all stuck. Yeah, and it almost happens then because our friend uh, Scan or Scan the Shrew... Uh, gets grabbed, and they have to yank him down, and Alma has to carry his corpse. Oh. Yeah. They even wound Alma briefly, but, you know, Badger, she can shake it off. Yeah. Wait, did uh, Scan actually die during that? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, he did. Oh, he did. I forgot about that. That's morbid. Yeah. Dang, Jay. Yeah, yeah, he gets his comeuptance <laughs> pretty quick, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I could have put that in my notes where I was like, Man, Scan the Shrew is pretty scummy. I hope he gets his... Oh, he's dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't take very long, no. No. <laughs> Bye, Scan. Bye, Scan. <laughs> we are... We are we need... <laughs> <laughs> Scan from page... Two, what? 150 to... 152. <laughs> we yeah, are we gotta have, you. like... A cannon firing or something for every dead. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't oh, take a long time. At all. <laughs> Considering how many losses that the shrews go through in this book, like yeah. in every single, but I swear the shrews were put there just so they could have a body count for the good guys. Yeah, I think so, and the sparrows too, because I think didn't a lot of the sparrows besides like four or five of them. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yep. Yep. Oh God, the massacre. Yeah. God. Ugh. Yeah, I think uh, says in the book, no one knew that murder happened that day. It was just Iron Beast oh. forces just kill all the old and young sparrows. All the babies, all the old people, all dead. Yeah. I did not register this as a child, and I read this through, and I was like, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> I've been, uh, there's a game around campus. I'm in college right now. It's called Humans vs. Zombies. And essentially, one group has nerf guns, uh, and the other group of zombies has nothing. But they're trying to tag the the humans, and if you tag a human, they become a zombie. <laughs> and I can, for some reason, during that entire scene where all of the uh, all of the sparrows were just dive bombing these these rats with arrows, I was just thinking of this this very silly game on campus that we play, and how in like nearly impossible it is to take out somebody with a ranged weapon while you're just you know trying to get in close so uh it was it was maybe a little bit of lessened pain on my part uh mostly because I was like oh they're fine oh, <laughs> oh yeah they're not fine, they're, fine <laughs> they're not they'll get up it's just a few arrows to the head they're still good they're still good yeah nerf darts sure. Pain ones. Uh, my actually, in my when I read this as a kid, again Martin the Warrior had been my first book. So was it? I think uh, Pain. Sorry, I'm diverting back to the Pain ones just for just a second. Uh, Galby Tribe was the first thing I brought up because it's not dissimilar, even if they could communicate. But let's talk about the sparrows because that's obviously where we're going. Yeah, this is the last one. This is the last book with the sparrows, isn't it? I'm, um, I'm going to double-check that. I think they make a brief appearance. Oh, you mean book as in book in the series. I thought you were talking about the books in this book. 
Oh, no, yeah, that's what I meant, like, the book overall. They don't. I think this is their last appearance, yeah, because in Pearls of Lucha, which is the next one in the, what would you call it, the chronological timeline, Yep. Um, they don't appear. Yeah, I definitely don't remember them in that one. Which would make sense if you think how many, like, how much their numbers were thinned. They maybe just kind of died out or moved away or something, which is very sad to think about, but that's all yeah. I can think of. Yeah, because that's what it sounded like. Because I know, well, I mean, granted, this is jumping ahead slightly, but I remember at the very end of the book where they have, like, the Rolo as the recorder, he mentions that, like, Sir Harry the Muse kind of lives with the, score, with the uh, sparrows, but... Yeah, I don't think there were that many left. I think there was like four that actually make it back to Redwall. Oh, um, you mean Tim Churchmouse as the recorder? Oh, yes, Tim Churchmouse. I was thinking of Pearls of Lutra with Rolo as the recorder. Um, yeah, I think he meant Tim mentions that uh, Harry the Muse is with them, but yeah, that's yes. the last we ever hear of him. Which is sad because I really like the Sparrow language. It's very amusing to me. Yeah, and it was nice having them as just part of the Redwall group. Yeah, I liked Warbeak a lot. Yeah. But and, yeah. yeah, I got pretty sad when I was rereading it this time. Like, all right, mm-hmm. Warbeak. Mm-hmm. Especially the way they do it, too, where Matthias is like, has anyone seen my friend Warbeak? And then the next line is, his heart sank. And I'm like, oh. No. Yep. <laughs> Martin the Warrior flashbacks. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, nah, no, that, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not going there yet. <laughs> yeah, not no, yet. <laughs> we will get to that in time. Uh, but yeah, so the sparrow. This is after they go through the Penguin Forest, but the sparrows catch up with the main Red Wallers when they're fighting the Stonefleck army. And sparrows just like, well, they just outright just decide to help the yeah help Matthias and crew, and this is how they die. Yeah, so. and though the characters bring up like Orlando the Axe, who's the biggest and like strongest of them all, is like. He shows like immense respect to Warbeak. He goes, "Wow, <laughs> I've seen." Cre- he even says, "Like I've seen creatures three times her size with not nearly that amount of bravery." Yeah, uh, birds don't really have a lot of. Uh, they don't really use weapons. They're all natural fighters, and so a lot of them probably hit the ground well before they got into beak and claw range. Yeah, the, the ones that do, we do get the. We do get it, the description of them grabbing the rats by the head with their claws and then pecking their eyes out. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yep. Let me try and find that part. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic reading. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we lose the sparrows and even Warbeak and... Wow. So. Yeah. I, I, if I had to guess, I guess he. I get. I want to go and say Jake's did this. So, that to convince the reader, yeah, anyone can die. Yeah. Even if it's a kid story, we know it's a kid story, and probably not gonna kill off the main uh, main adults and kids. Yeah, though there are some probably. main adults in this series that do die. Oh yeah. There are plenty of them. Speaking of Martin the Warrior. <sighs> Oh! Uh, <laughs> wow. Let's not do that, okay? We'll get to that one in time. Trigger warning, trigger warning. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez. Uh, so, yeah, um, what was the other... Th- most of this most of this book is spent just on one long chase. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we left book one, Matthias and his friends had gotten out from Logalog's help, and it, they basically spend the entire book chasing uh, Slygar and his crew. And to be fair, there's some pretty daunting daunting uh, obstacles in the road. We mentioned the Pine Forest with the Pain Ones. There's this giant river with Stoneflex Army on the other side. Which I, I would like to point out, I, I don't think I really noticed this until this time reading through. Stoneflex is probably one of, one of the most inept commanders in this series. What makes you say that? So he's all quiet and brooding and kind of creepy, and then when they actually get in trouble, when they, he starts attacking them, they're like, oh, we've got them now. Oh, shoot. I forgot that they had an otter that can eat the fish that attack them. All right, we'll chase them with our ferry. Why did I forget to undo the anchor line? I noticed that, too. Yeah, that kind of cracked me up. It's like, <laughs> well, if you'd <laughs> planned this better. <laughs> yep. And then 
he attacks them while the heroes are running away. Not only does he miss Matthias's head, which is the bigger target, his arrow bounces off the hilt of Martin's sword. <laughs> and That's then he trips over a, a tree root in his own territory. And then yells at his soldiers for running away from, oh, only two soldiers when he's standing behind all of them and those two enemies are Orlando and Matthias. Yeah. Well, I mean, he might not have had his coffee that day. He might have woken up on the wrong side of the bed, you know. I mean, it must be hard being a villain. <laughs> it's true. But, yeah, when I'm just reading through this, I'm like, wow, this character is really bad. <laughs> He's really dumb. <laughs> and, uh, moreover, the way he goes out is kind of uh, kind of in that same vein. Um, yeah. <laughs> until the sparrows arrive, he was arguably he and his army were winning against uh, the angry parents group. But yep. sparrows show up, and when the battle turns in, against his favor, does he die with his men heroically? Bring no. his, he tries running no. away, and then Logalog uses a sword as a projectile weapon and throws it into his back. <laughs> I feel like the shrews are kind of, not necessarily by the good guys, but they're kind of underestimated by the villains because they're so small. Oh. Uh-huh. But they really are really good fighters. Like, they are pretty lethal. Yeah. Yeah, because that's all they do. I was saying, we're talking about a group of cr- creatures who, while they may visit the Abbey, they they don't live at the Abbey, so they don't have the protections of high walls. Yeah. And while they may argue with each other all the time, if a sudden group of rats or other species that are out to do them harm comes along, they've got to defend themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And something we actually kind of learn from every single one of these books is that the woods are dangerous, and you know they're split up into territories where you know each group kind of defends their own. And so for a roaming band like the uh, Gausam Shrews, you know, defense is probably going to be one of their, their primary options. Yeah. yeah. They show a lot of ingenuity in battle. Like, I know there's a couple of them where, like, four of them will team up and essentially, like, start spitting around with their swords out and, you know, working together, which is kind of funny considering how much they argue, but how perfectly they work, like, in tandem with each other in battle. Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, when... When times get tough, then they are are able to form as a team and get yep. stuff done. When we end this book, basically, uh, where are we at the end of the book? I mean, we haven't made it to Marquisless yet, but... They have crossed the gorge. Um, Jess, yeah. um, Jess comes up with a plan to cross the gorge, and right. they get across. And I think that's where we leave them. I think... Or maybe that's the next book. Maybe that's the beginning of the next book. Yeah, it ends with them finding the gorge. Um, Okay. Right. Katie didn't read ahead. Nope, nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Though I would like to point out with the gorge, so Slacker decides to make it so the heroes can't follow him, so he burns the bridge, literally burns the bridge, and sends it collapsing. All right, Slacker, good job. How are you getting back? (laughs) Yeah. Well, oh, I mean, my. I guess, he, I guess he wanted to stay over there, though, because he wanted to, like, be the ruler of the kingdom or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, he made playing to avoid moss flower for at least a year or so, so the Red Wallers aren't out for his head. This is true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, he probably has a, a sense that if he shows his face in moss flower, his only option is avoid Red Wall like the plague. Or maybe head towards Salamandastron, which isn't a good idea either. No. <laughs> yeah, but, but at least is. the creatures at Salamandastron are not actively looking to kill him. No, that's true. Yeah. Unless Orlando reaches there before him, and he's like, all right, I'm, oh, God, no. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that would be a good fanfic, so much right. Yes. <laughs> Looking it up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I should stop saying the word fanfic. Dangerous things happen. I'm still on the the screen. I hadn't been looking at it, so I looked up for a second, and uh, the words salty ferret form came up. I'm just... Oh, nope, 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 okay. nope, nope, nope. Back Page away, back away. GG podcast. <laughs> you will stop. I, I said up. nothing. Nothing about that was not PG. I know. I'm aware. Ferrets are salty. <laughs> oh, back oh. away. <laughs> well... Back to, oh, God, anything <laughs> that, but... 
<laughs> yeah, uh, let's go. Let's go back to the B plot with the, uh, uh, yeah. the description. Iron Beast. Yes, please. <laughs> I would like to say that I think it's hilarious that Iron Beak and is it Magnus or Mangus? Anyway, his crow make the exact same stupid mistake as Clooney and his crew, and that's to dismiss Constance as a non-threat. Yeah, why would you do that? I don't get that at all. Like, I get them being like, "Oh, we don't," I, like they don't look at any cre- they look at every creature that can't fly as beneath them, but it's like that. Constance is like twice the size of any of you. Really, you're you're just going to dismiss her. Yeah, and the arrogance of yeah, villains. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just that's that's all. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> the arrogance of villains. Moreover, yeah. I love the banter between Constance and Ambrose. I don't yeah. know if he's on the wagon or not here, but he is definitely <laughs> a hoot and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So my favorite exchange is I think it's Mangus. That's how they say it in the. And Amber says, well, stand somewhere else, and I'll insult you there, Featherback. <laughs> I <good>. love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like they even bring up, like, I wish Basil was here. He would have plenty of insults. And then Amber is, like, <laughs> unleashes, like, this whole sentence and stuff. And he's like, how is that? And Constance is like, Basil would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granted, and, uh, I, I will say... It was it was not smart of them to underestimate Constance, but the, I guarantee you they had no idea that the tiny little nurse was going to attack them and actually bite their leader's foot to the bone. Yes. You oh, do yeah. not want to mess with the healers because they know exactly how anatomy works mm-hmm. and they know exactly what medicines to use. So you, no, you do not want to mess with the healers. No. Nope. Uh, yeah, do no harm. Um... <laughs> did, she take, did she take a note to that effect? Uh, uh, do no harm to those that you should, you know, do no harm to those that you want to help. Yeah, the oh, Hippocratic wow. Oath doesn't apply to the Redwall universe. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I would like to say, uh, not only do you not mess with the healer, apparently you shouldn't mess with the cook, because Brother Sedge threatens to kick the heck out of everyone before they leave the, the kitchen. And I'm afraid, yeah. I have a feeling you're going to send him and Sister Mate out to the birds with kitchen utensils and herbs, and that would be the end of the battle. <laughs> you mean, besides the fact that Sister Mate is apparently Walter White and can make sleeping drugs... <laughs> I look into her, and she's like, ooh, I've always wanted to do this in formal. It's like, you're a proper little fiend, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to admit, she's especially probably wanted to do it after it was done to them by Slagar. So. Yeah. This is true. And uh, we don't get, get in, I for, honestly forgot, we, did, we didn't get in this book, Cornflowers kind of moments of awesome. I mean, there is the bell, bell tower incident, we're going to get to that, mm-hmm. but... It, it come book three, and we're going to talk about that when we get there. Cornflower <laughs> is definitely as ca- just as capable as Matthias. Yeah. Yep. But in here, she and Mrs. Churchmouse, uh, basically, they stage their own plot while Iron Beak and the, his crows are watching the Red Wallers practice with weapons outside. They have, in, well, Iron Beak and his crews are in the bell tower, mind you, with near the bells. <laughs> they uh, just decide to do, make like some AC/DC bells. and... <laughs> yes. I like yours better. And I, I just kind of, I, you know, the the image of Iron Beak waiting for all his crows to get their hearing back was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Mangas is like, beat what chair? What? <laughs> They've got some tinnitus. Or when the Red Wallers purposely use a catapult of garbage <laughs> on them. Yes. That made me laugh a lot as a child, I'm not going to lie. Yep. <laughs> Make me laugh as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But you know, when you're younger, like gross stuff tends to be even funnier. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I also like to point out um, Constance always seems to be the she's peaceful until you piss her off, and then in that case, she's like, "Yeah, I know we're like our or, the order here isn't doesn't really harm another, but yeah, I'm going to be the exception to that." When she threatens to drown the magpies, and when the abbot is like, that was a good bluff, and she goes, what bluff? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your girl, Constance. I mean, I, it's straight up the mama bear trope, only this time mama badger. Yep. Yeah. yeah. She didn't originally come from the abbey, did she? Um, I don't know. We don't know, do we? 
I'm I think it was, I thought in uh, Redwald that she was kind of an outsider along with the uh, beaver. There was a reference to her going to Abbey School, though, because um, I believe it might have been in book one because she said that she would always go to sleep and Methuselah would have to, like, wake her up. Ah, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Maybe an orphan, like literally everyone else in this universe. Every single person, creature <laughs> in the world, besides, like, maybe ten of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always tons of kids in Redwall with no parents. Yeah. Well, Which, oh. I mean, it calls back to the, the point um, that the woods are very dangerous out there, you know, so if you choose to live outside Redwall, there's a good chance that, you know... You're gonna uh, lose we parents. saw what happened to Matthias' sister, after all. So, uh, <laughs> yes. ah! <laughs> but, oh, I only bring her up just to hear the the doctor girlfriend impression. Oh. <laughs> oh, Matthias, I will take you to the gates of Redwall. Uh, I'm dead. Uh. <laughs> oh dear. So, yeah. Uh, it doesn't actually say, at least on the wikia, where she came from, so... Okay, we're gonna... Where'd you come from? <laughs> yes, <it's> so, <laughs> oh, so over uh, over this book, Iron Beak Invades the Abbey. Gee, that's never happened before. Uh, <laughs> I, I do like how the Red Wallers constantly say, better warriors than you have tried to attack us. <laughs> I, they have respect for Clooney. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> like, throughout the whole book, they don't really dis- they kind of dismiss Iron Beak as like, yeah, this is a threat, but eh, we've had worse. They they literally have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the basically the Red Wars are are banished to their own basements, cavern hole, the kitchens. Ambrose is still in his is still in his uh, cellars. <laughs> <laughs> what, and the moles the what gets you drunker quicker? <laughs> <laughs> the moles definitely uh, solve this problem by just saying, okay, we're just going to tunnel out. Mm-hmm. Presumably, Cavern Hole is atta- it's in the Abbey Foundations, and there's raw earth they can dig into. Yes, which brings back the point of the bird's arrogance, because they cannot figure out how the earth crawlers are doing this, because they cannot think past their own, like, being able to fly. <laughs> like, they can't put themselves in the position of their enemies like what would i do if i could not fly like which they actually they can't do that. i think that does prove that they're not as good as Clooney because Clooney did think of tunneling and all those different strategies whereas iron beak is like i'm just going to attack 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 yeah yeah this is why he's the b plot mm. <laughs> definitely i mean Clooney relegated these tests have... Clooney has some named officers what do we have with iron beak oh we have the three stooges. <laughs> yeah, we his three magpies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's just call them Mo, Larry, and Curly. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. The, at what at one point, however, Iron Beak does take some hostages because Constant locks the door and locks them out. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's okay, Constance. You're still a better leader than Stonefleck. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Cornflower, Mrs. Church Mouse, and Rolo are all captured by the birds. And Iron Beak's like, I'm totally gonna kill him. Okay. The rollers are like, oh, okay. I mean, we'll, do, let, we'll we'll need to talk about this, but uh, they, I, like you brought up earlier, Jeremy, I love how non pulse the abbot is about this. Yeah. Where he's like, all right, kill them if you must, but, you know, we are a democratic order, we need to discuss this. And he's like, I'll totally kill them. Yeah, okay, go for it. Uh, all right, fine, I'll give you two days. <laughs> It always bothered me that Mrs. Churchmouse didn't have a name besides Mrs. Churchmouse, so I named her Ethel. <laughs> I, I'll go with that. I don't know why. Ethel. It just seemed like a good name at the time. <laughs> I like well, it. Well, it's, it's, like, uh, it's still better than Mr. Squirrel, sir, not like, appearing in this book. <laughs> yeah. 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 To mention him, too. <laughs> he was so unimportant, he doesn't even show up in this one. <laughs> still out for cigarettes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Either that or he's one of the group that went in a different direction looking for the slavers and he's still trying to find them like, hey guys! 
I'm trying to. Wow. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> oh, now it's just sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He just appears oh, completely. completely it's like unrelated. you won't believe what I went through. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it's some a stuff. Story so captivating that it'll never be imprinted. <laughs> it's like, and then I, and then it just cuts off, and that's the end of the book. <laughs> Now that, I would like that, yeah. Red Rollers basically capture the magpies, sister, adding to Sister May. She deliberately drugs them with fruit. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I like the reaction Iron... as they get drugged, too, where one of them gets its beak stuck in the ground. He's like, I can't fly. The strawberries are magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is uh, a hilarious yeah, but... scene in the audiobook. <laughs> I love Very it. Yeah, three, definitely Three Stooges is definitely appropriate. I can, I can now picture the one that got stuck in the floor going. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> yeah, Iron Beak's reaction when he finds out his supply chain has been taken out. Oh, pretty funny too. Mm-hmm. There's a definite what? What? <laughs> That's what you get for underestimating your enemy. Yep. Uh, so eventually we do get a hostage trade, trade, and that's pretty much where book two ends on both A and B plots. Yep. So where the Red Wallers are working to try and fight back while they're using their new tunnel network. There's a little bit of foreboding, foreshadowing with the tapestry of Martin the Warrior because yes. Mangus is like, uh, we shall steal the tapestry uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> Way to think outside the box, Mangus. Truly, you are so, you are your intellect is terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, since he's a seer and since he's in Red Wall with hostile intent. Martin shows up in the, from the spirit realm and it's like, uh-uh, you yeah. ain't doing that in my house. Oh. Mangus, what do your visions tell you? I just keep seeing this mouse in armor with a sword. I don't get it. But there is actually... Oh, Martin no, making sorry. faces at him like, ha-ha, ha-ha, <laughs> clouding your visions again. Ooh, you're trying to have visions there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Martin wouldn't do that because he's too serious. I bet yeah. Rose would do that though. <laughs> <laughs> we have. I don't know who you're talking about yet. Oh, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Um. Oh, yeah. but there is actually a little bit of strategy with it because they're not just trying to steal the picture; they're mm-hmm. trying to lure the Red Wallers out to defend the picture. Yeah. This is true. Well, I mean, admittedly, that did work the last time, except that the Red Wallers were competent, and you. And used a combination of, of Basil and Jess to get it back. Yeah. Yep, where we must bring up the loss of the poor dish rag. Yeah. Oh, that dish rag. <laughs> Is and that going to be another one of our running videos? Okay. <laughs> In memory of dish rag. This is where you add another cannon shot. Dish rag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just a military march. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I also want to point out that uh, Mr. Churchmouse definitely, uh, he definitely gets a moment where he's just like, oh, screw you guys, I'm going to rescue my wife, when he finds out he's been kidnapped, but they literally ha- kind of have to hold him back. Yep. Like, I will look for you. I will find you. <laughs> and then I'll get Constance to beat you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy is definitely having a bad season here. Yaoi his, are his twins kidnapped. Now his wife's been kidnapped, even if he does get her back. Yeah. And, yeah. well, but on the plus side, at least he has a first name. Yeah, he yeah. does. John. John. Yep. John. <laughs> <laughs> also, apparently he lost a whole bunch of children because in Redwall, didn't he have, like, the abbot made a point of how many children they had? Oh, yeah. The church bias, oh. like, all those mouths to feed, and apparently they all died, except the twins. <laughs> no. Dark? Oh, it's got dark. No, they, they all went off. They're, they're fine. Okay. Well, they, they, they weren't named. Open. They're on the nature walk with Mr. Squirrel. There oh. we go. They're helping Mr. Squirrel search towards the north. <laughs> Better than going out for cigarettes, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered everything. Oh, I will say that true that true cake does sound pretty tasty. Oh yeah, uh, there's uh, not right nearly as much food porn here. No, yeah. oh. but mm. that's about what we do get. Yeah, I like um, all of 
Baby Rolo's little songs about like killing birds and <laughs> yeah, magpie in the eye. Oh, yes. magpie in the eye. <laughs> oh, and when we get to Bellmaker, we actually will see a divot uh, go at some birds. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember his name. I just remember that incident. So I I love every mention of the the Dibbins in Brian Jakes's books. They're always some of my my favorite groups. Yes. Yep. Uh, they're not mentioned here by name anyway as a group. But I think in Mariel of Redwall is the first time we actually hear the word Dibbin like used mm. to indicate you know young young ones. Squat up. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, they have their entire little divin group, and they're led by oh, the right. squirrel Arvin, is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, oh, that it's was Pearls. Pearls. Yeah. Oh, oops. I just remember Tansy Pansy Tukaloo. Yeah. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> they even reference that in um, Long Patrol, where she's like, Thank what did you used to call me? And then the yeah. reporter's like, oh, I remember. <laughs> Final thoughts in summarizing? It's. I mean, it's. It's a. Trend. It's. It's one long chase. I, I honestly have more interest in the B plot here. Truth be told. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's less. Well, I'd say there's less death in the B plot, but actually, no. There was an entire massacre that was done off screen. Yes. Whoops. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. The A plot is good, but. Mm-hmm. It, it, What's the term? Status quo is God? Yeah. We don't see a lot of character development um, in the A-plot. Yeah, the parents aren't, are not are still after you, Slagar. And Amanda Mayo's starting to grow up a little bit, but we... Okay. We don't see much say, of it now. I would say there's some development as far as Cheek is concerned. Like, he mm-hmm. he learns to conquer his, his fear of water. Mm-hmm. Yes. I will say something for Madame Mayo near the end of this part where they have to go across the bridge. Instead of just being, you know, acting all brave, he uses his head and comes up with the idea of blindfolding the two most scared characters so this way they could just follow everyone else. Mm. One nice guy. Yeah. Mm. Well, lovely dude. Well, I mean, what else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's less bratty, at least. Yeah. yeah. I, I do like the moment of him and Tess kind of... Like, oh, I wonder what we'll be doing today. Maybe daisy picking and stuff like that. I oh, thought yeah. that was neat them trying to keep the mood up. <laughs> and the, one of the slavers is like, all right, they've gone insane. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, bets what's going to happen next that we haven't read ahead at all? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've totally not read this book like ten times. <laughs> I bet more huh. people are going to die. I I think that's a safe bet. <laughs> I think Sir, uh, Sir Harry the Muse is going to still be awesome. Yes. I think more of this un, uh, untotaled amount of shrews are going to die. I think How many Constance shrews are actually be. with them? Is a lot of them seem to die in this book. Oh my goodness! We don't have a bo- Well, we don't have a, a head count when we start, and we don't have a body count when we end. No. So. Shrew kill know. counter. There were four hundred <laughs> oh. of them. <laughs> There were 400 of them in the army at Redwall, so, I mean, maybe there's a couple hundred, 300, something like that. Well, it's now. Oh. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, it's just, throughout the whole thing, it's every time they get into a fight, all of a sudden, like, 20 of them die. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Orlando get like Orlando stands up and is like, "Yeah, try and attack me!" And just like an arrow hits him in the hand, where it's like two seconds earlier, a shoe tried climbing up on the raft and he gets hit right between the eyes. Yeah, yeah poor guy. Yeah, so main yeah, character. Dolan's army is kind of really bad shots. Then. Yeah, and Orlando even points out that he's a giant target, and yet I, that I think that arrow to the hand is the only one that actually hits him. Main characters in Redwall books don't die until, like, maybe six chapters before the end and, like, four <laughs> chapters before the end. And yep. some glorious When their manner. plot armor runs out. Yeah, when their plot armor runs out. Yeah, they have to serve nice as and devastating. motivation for some kind of character to, to go off the rails. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, Martin the Warrior. Well, before I forget, there is one thing I want to mention. It's not identified by name, but... Uh, we have a non-Badger Bloodwrath character here. 
and that is Jess during the painting. Oh, oh yes. yeah, she goes on a friggin' rampage. It's an intelligent rampage. She doesn't lose her mind to it, but we're outright told that she just starts shaking. Her blood, her eyes turn red, and oh yeah, that's friggin' blood rage. <laughs> yeah, sounds like rabies. <laughs> is that what blood rage is uh, <laughs> you might want to get that checked out <laughs> I don't remember any mentions of foaming at the mouth so we might ah, be okay I'm or very sure. enraged <laughs> I, I swear oh, it's at not least blood, blood rage blood, blood wrath things. excuse me but huh? not blood rage blood wrath but yeah you get the point yeah. blood wrath yeah it does seem to be kind of an uh, affliction in this universe and something that's quantifiable, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. It's like they hit their limit break or something. They're All of a sudden, they're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Just think of a roided out Jess tearing people apart. Jess, <laughs> 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 calm down. Where's Mr. Squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's she's drag dolling the puni- the painted one's leader like she's the Hulk. <laughs> well, this took a turn. Yep. <laughs> oh man, I do like the more quiet, angry moments in this one. Like when, um, oh, what's the little the little rat? Oh, Vich is trying to taunt Madame Mayo, and he's like, hi, your dad's going to die, and he glare, and Madame Mayo just glares at him like, you couldn't kill him. They won't. He'll find us. Clooney and couldn't I'm kill him. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clooney couldn't kill him. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think what the guy that Clooney stabbed and left in a ditch is going to be able to do it. <laughs> so why don't we wrap up, then? All right, any other thoughts you guys want to mention before we uh, wrap up? I think um... I mean... You mentioned, like, the A plot is kind of like the status quo in this one, and the B plot, because something new is happening, is a little bit more interesting in this section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I do like all the songs. It's kind of an indication that there will be many, many songs in the future books. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Okay, folks, when we uh, call it, we'll wrap this up. So, listeners, thank you for listening, and we'll see you in around two weeks for the book three, which is, how do we say this again? Malkaris. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Melkaris. See you next time, folks. Bye. Bye. Take care, everyone. <laughs>